Welcome to Consultants in Cardiology and Electrophysiology. We are located in the Chicago metro area. Um, today uh, we are in our outpatient phase cath lab. The presentation is mostly to uh, present how to utilize the Cardiva Vascade closure device in closing a femoral artery. We firmly believe that to be able to have a successful closure of the device um, and successful placement of the closure device in the femoral artery, we need to understand how to place uh, the sheath in the femoral artery. So today's first case um, uh, is a young lady here with uh, short distance intermittent claudication and history of peripheral vascular occlusive disease and previous stents. So we are going to enter the right common femoral artery, um, the objective to do an angiogram and then follow it with angioplasty as necessary. So the beginning of the case, we are going to begin with our ultrasound. We are going to utilize a micropuncture technique, micropuncture sheath. The sheath is actually a Turimo 6 French micropuncture and uh, our uh, ultrasound technology is a Philips technology. And uh, we are going to define the anatomy uh, utilizing ultrasound. So as you can see on the, uh, on the ultrasound, um, this is called the Mickey Mouse uh, sign. Uh, and uh, if you look, you can see a circle around uh, seven, a circle around 12, and there is the compressible circle in between the two. Uh, this is like a Mickey Mouse head with, with two ears the head and the little nose, which represents literally the, uh, uh, the entrance of the great saphenous vein. Now, when I start identifying the anatomy, I always begin by looking at where the vein is, and it's usually compressible, as you see here, and then I identify the circle that's around seven, and this is the profonda, the profonda artery, a femoris profonda. And the circle on the top is the superficial femoral artery. I mobilize my probe up towards the head. And as you can see, this becomes like almost a figure of eight. The upper circle is merging with the lower circle. And after it merges, it forms the common femoral artery. This is practically the uh, the, the best place to literally engage because you are above the bifurcation. The advantage of the ultrasound guidance is that you identify the diseased area of the artery and here you could tell that the posterior wall of the common femoral artery is highly echogenic. It is a quite uh, uh, white in color which is indicative of a calcium deposition uh, while the anterior wall seems to be free. Now uh, you see again the profonda, the superficial femoral artery. I will move my probe up a little bit and I'm gonna engage the anterior wall of the common femoral artery. Again, in the middle of the sheath. So uh, my needle is shaking and I'm gonna enter the anterior wall of the femoral artery. The time I have flow, I remove my probe. I advance my uh, wire. and I have a good purchase with the wire. Uh, you could do a fluoroscopy to identify if your wire is, uh, is in the right place, but actually the wire went very smooth, very easily. We practically done with the ultrasound. I make my nick on the skin, then we're gonna place the sheath in. All right, and this will aspirate and discard always, flush it. Now we have the common femoral artery engaged with a micropuncture sexy French sheath utilizing ultrasound guidance. Ultrasound guidance, just to note, uh, we've been using this technique for quite a few years. It allows you to identify exactly the location of the common femoral artery as I have shown you. You will be above the bifurcation and I always look with my 
uh, ultrasound probe to see if my, um, my ultrasound probe is too high into the belly, it could indicate to you that the bifurcation is high. So I always identify the location of my probe before I puncture the artery. Um, so the ultrasound shows you the exact bifurcation. It also shows you how diseased the common femoral artery, and it makes you avoid areas of calcification or very heavy sclerosis, uh, as this is key to the success to any closure device that you are going to utilize. Additionally, utilizing ultrasound helped us identify exactly where you're gonna locate your lidocaine injection. So you are right in the middle of your ultrasound area and you are using a shorter needle so you are not puncturing neither the artery nor the vein in case you use anticoagulation that's another source of bleeding and that would help us decreasing that chance of bleeding so now we have the sheath in place we're going to proceed with our procedure um, and uh, then after that we'll come back when we are closing this uh, artery this is the conclusion of the procedure as we started this morning and we showed the axis of the common femoral artery. The patient underwent an atherectomy of the uh, left superficial femoral artery with a silver hawk technology followed by drug coated balloon angioplasty with a crossover technique. So now we are preparing to remove the sheath. We're gonna take an image. Um, most of the images of the sheets are taken in the epsilateral approach. Uh, I prefer the contralateral because the objective of it is to see the exact entry point of the sheath that would identify if there is disease in the artery and identifies if it is above the bifurcation. So at this moment of time, we're gonna have an image run of uh, after we exchange the long sheath to a short sheath to see um, what's going on. So um, on this image, you see the exact entry point of the sheath um, into the common femoral artery. There's some disease of the external iliac, but there is no gradient across these lesions. Um, we can come off the digital subtraction by uh, taking the bone, and you could see that the, 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 the stick is right in the, literally on the head of the femur, which is an appropriate uh, fluoroscopic uh, look. Um, if you run it, you could see that the stick is above the bifurcation as we wanted it. So we're going to prepare to remove the sheath. So um, the, the, the device, the Cardiva device, it is a fully integrated device, meaning you really do not need to change your sheath and it goes through your own sheath. So it's a single system. It has a key, which is the blue, and the tip is where your nitinol disc is going to open. The collagen sits literally in the area in inside this black tube. So then with short strikes, you take your sheath in uh, to the white dot. And this means that your device or your nitinol desk, the closed nitinol desk is about two centimeters outside this sheath. So at the level of the white ring, you hold it at 45 degrees. I hold the silver with two fingers, the index and the thumb. I open the device and the green here tells me that the disc has already opened. I usually put my hand on the sheath and I pull till I feel the device is hitting the sheath. So I know that my, my disc is open and now it's at the end of the sheath. I will remove the sheath. I will hold in place. And this is called the sweet spot. The sweet spot is the spot where the device is not the bleeding. This disc has a membrane on it, so it prevents the bleeding, and it tells me that's sitting literally at the arteriotomy site. Now, after I am sure with that, I bring my key down, bring my black tube back, and the collagen is open. I wait 15 seconds. According to the IFU, it's 15 to 30 seconds. The collagen will absorb the water, will absorb some of the blood, it becomes activated, and it will sit on the top of the artery. So now we are coming to the 15 second at around 60 degrees, I'm holding it. I bring my green tube, one, two, three, four. 
and I push the collagen on the top of the artery. Now it's very important to hold correctly. So I have two fingers above, one finger below, and I feel the pulse. Now I hold the silver handle with my middle finger and the thumb, and I close with the index finger, remove the sheath, and I hold pressure. It's very important to see how we are holding pressure. I'm using three fingers and I hold the artery with the tips of my fingers. So I currently anchoring my collagen with my finger. The middle finger here is literally holding the collagen in place. We hold about three minutes in the patients who are not anticoagulated and five minutes in the patients who are anticoagulated. Or you could make a rule of thumb to hold everybody around five minutes. So our timer is on and uh, the procedure is concluded. Thank you very much.